All right, let's get started today. I hope you had a good and productive week. I definitely had a good week. Before we get into the video, man, I've been so lucky. So Tuesday, I went out fishing early, 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 and had horrible luck. So I was like, I'm going to go home. And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me see if I could find another spot. So I kind of went to a place where I knew there was a little brook, whatever. And I found a spot. And since then, I've just been slaying trout like crazy. I took the kids to the spot. I'm so proud of him. My oldest son here, he caught the biggest trout any of us have ever caught. This is about a pound, just a little, little bit, a little bit uh, under a pound. And it's a 13 incher. This is the biggest trout we've ever caught. This is our first rainbow trout too. So it's really good. This week we got got our first rainbow trout. And then I'm proud of my my middle son here because he was. We were having a hard time getting him one. I really wanted to get him one, too. So he says, hey, Dad, switch from the pink lure to the orange one. <clears throat> and so we did that, and he got a brook trout on his first cast, and he was just so excited. It was a great time. Then I took out my youngest son today, and um, he needs one-on-one -on -one attention, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I took just him out, and he got two rainbow trout, and he was just so pumped. Here he is in his normal personality, trying to block the camera with his hat. Um, of course, he has to touch the fish, too. He's all about that kind of stuff. But he got two rainbow trout. He reeled them in himself and everything. And Dad still gets the hooks out, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, it was a lot of fun, and so just a very, very blessed time. So let's get into this debate. So we're going to talk about Rebecca McLaughlin's section of the debate. I'm going to try not to cut and stop and comment as much this time around. But there's actually two things I want to mention about this. My brother, um, <clears throat> he doesn't watch all my videos, but he did watch the one I did about this 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 debate. And he agreed with most of it. And, and one thing he said was that even the title of the debate tells you their whole scam, right? It's, it's just controlled opposition, one way, up, up one side, down the other. And he said, look, is woke church a stepping stone to theological compromise? It assumes that these woke church people are actually legitimate, you know, conservative, Bible-believing Christians and they just want to do the right thing, love your neighbor. And it's like, but maybe, like, maybe one day they'll, it'll be a stepping stone to heresy. And it's like, see, that's the scam, though. No, no, no. They're, they're, they're believing heretical ideas right now. They're overturning the law of God right now. They're a danger to the church right now. It's not like maybe one day they get a few stepping stones and then they, they'll be... They'll be, uh, they'll be a problem. No, no, they're a problem now. And it's just so, it's just so funny how even the title telegraphs this play so ridiculously stupidly. He also mentioned the fact that, um, you know, they got this guy, Sean Demur, just like I said in the video yesterday, because he's out there going up all these crazy, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about this and that, these crazy things. It could be a stepping stone to that. And he's like, but, but they're doing all of this right now. It's like, that's the lie. That's the lie that Gospel Coalition, not Demers, because I'm not saying Demers is lying. I'm saying Gospel Coalition is that that's stuff that they're not doing, the crazy stuff and all of that. Now, here, that brings me to the disagreement my brother had with me, because I said at the end of last video, I said, I bet you Rebecca McLaughlin's going to be really woke. I have not seen her section yet, so I don't know if this is the case, but once my brother said that he disagreed with me on that, it made perfect sense. He said, I don't think she's going to be that woke. I think she's going to probably be like, oh, yeah, well, that I'm concerned with the Zimzazer, too. And I'm I'm concerned with the Dragonkin, too. And 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 and, you know, the segregated fellowship. I'm concerned with the with the colleges segregating, too. And so she's going to come across very reasonable because that completes the scam, right? So Demers is going to say, oh, yeah, you know, you know, we're all Christians here. And then she's going to be like, well, yeah, I'm totally concerned. So, like, we're totally in the same page, even though obviously she's woke, um, but she's not going to present that way. That's what my brother predicts. He hasn't seen this either. And so we'll see what happens here. That makes too much sense for it not to be the case. She's going to come across very reasonable. She's not going to she's not going to really talk about the real issues here and all of that. Let's see. Maybe he's wrong, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I thought she was going to You know what? I'm going to stick with my guns. She's going to come across woke. All right, let's do it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, somebody somebody in the comments section. I, I've already I've already interrupted. She hasn't even spoken yet. Someone in the comments section got pretty mad. He was like, "What? So, so women can't debate either? Like, what? What a stretch!" 
And it's like, well, no, I'm not saying women can't debate. Of course they can debate. They're intelligent enough to debate. I'm just saying they shouldn't debate. It's dirty work. It's not it's not it's not the proper place for a woman. It's like boxing, right? Can a woman box? Yeah, a woman can box, but she obviously shouldn't box because that goes against femininity to be a boxer or an MMA fighter or a politician or any this is this is dirty work. It's men's work. I don't want a woman, you know, uh in the uh, in the uh, in the sewers, you know, cleaning the septics, you know, the sewers any more than I want a woman, you know, being a, 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 a hard hitting politician or, you know, or debater or boxer. I just it's just not the proper um, role station. It's just it just goes against their nature to be doing this kind of stuff. And that's uh, simple as that. Our question today is. Is wokeness a stepping stone to theological compromise? No. But before I address that question, I want to ask another one. Oh, no. Are drugs bad for you? I could spend the next 10 minutes presenting a very compelling case that drugs are killing people in America every day. They are breaking down families. They are ravaging mental health. Drugs <laughs> are extremely bad for you. But at the end of that 10 minutes, my guess is that somebody stand up and say, right now, I'm taking drugs for my heart condition. And my doctors say that if I stop taking them, I'll be dead within a week. We cannot address this question if we do not carefully define what we mean by the word woke. And in many of our conversations today, the definition of woke is being as confused as that definition of drugs, where we are not distinguishing between life-saving medication and cocaine. I want to But okay, so I, I've already broken my promise, whatever. Uh, I was I just I just promised I would try. But in any case. Um, right, but but so so she of course she's right. If we're gonna be scientifically defining these things, we need to be careful, blah, 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 blah. But if you're in a debate and it's a debate about criminal justice and stuff like that. And you say, you know, are drugs illegal? And it's like, you know, the context that we're in kind of determines what drugs mean. So obviously I'm not talking about aspirin if I'm at a criminal justice, you know, you know, symposium or something like that. And so so let's just stop the pretense of this nonsense, like how we don't know what we're talking about when we're talking about woke. We, we got to define it because nobody knows. Everybody knows exactly what we're talking about. And it's like, obviously, some people will define it a little bit different and stuff like that. But pretty much it's like when it's like when when someone says, hey, be a man, you know, grow up, you know, be a man, you know, find your big boy pants and it's time to act like a man. And people are like, well, what is a man after? How does a man act? Hmm, I mean, David sang songs. So what, what, what? How do you define man? And it's like, are, are you insane? Who, who, who interacts like that? I'll tell you who interacts like this is people that are trying to pull the wool over your eyes interact like that. I propose that we do three things as we step into this conversation. First, we must define. Second, we must repent. And third, we must believe. So first, we must define. Now, Sean offered us one definition of wokeness or perhaps various definitions of wokeness that exist on, on one side of a conversation. I want to start with a more original definition of wokeness, as that word was originally used, that word woke was originally used to mean being awake, aware of, alive to the history of racial injustice in this country. And I want to say when it comes to that definition, God have mercy on us if we are not woke. God have mercy on us if we are not aware of, alive to the history of racial oppression in this country. When I was in seminary, one of my professors said that as we look back over the last 2000 years of Christian history, and as we look at every potential heresy that has come to the church, what we'll notice is that theologians have had to carefully distinguish between two things that look quite similar or are spoken of in similar ways. And as we enter these conversations, we must define what we mean. And almost more importantly, we must ask other people what they mean. We must stop using 
our definitions of woke or definitions of woke that we have imported from other places to define what our brothers and sisters in Christ might be meaning when they use that language? No, BC, because the thing is, like, this is this is this is this is the whole scam here. Like, she's now she's now taken the the argument out of what it's about, right? So who cares about if you call yourself woke or not? What we're talking about is what you say about race, right? So being aware of racial oppression is, uh, you know, okay, I'm aware of racial oppression as well. But uh, being aware of it in such a way that it's like, well, racism never goes away. It just it just changes form. And, and even if there's no evidence of it, you know, you have, it's like COVID. There's no, you, there's no symptoms, but you definitely have it. It's like, it's like the same kind of nonsense. It's like, so, so she's taking the. So what? What you gotta? You gotta carefully, you know, if someone's, you know, says they're woke. You gotta carefully discern and decipher if they're really woke in that way. Maybe this way we're woke, or that way. And it's like, no, no, no. I'm talking about the people that, you know, the minute they see the next, you know, police shooting a black guy, are like, oh, it's a racist. It's a racist. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that kind of thing. Um, in any case, but she, she, and, and, and again. Like, the, the whole idea being presented here is that nobody's careful about this. Nobody's actually, you know, saying the right, you know, the, the right version of wokeness. And that's just, that's all a smokescreen. You know, yes, we know that the Bidiyanya Bwili is woke. Yes, we know that Matt Chandler is woke. Yes, we know that Tim Keller is woke. Yes, we know. And they're actually woke. But these guys want to say, well, 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 well we're not woke like that. And so, therefore, and it's, just, it's just crazy. I think a lot of this is pretending to be obtuse, too. It's like... They're pretending, like they're pretending to be stupid. Like I, I just saw a Jared Wilson tweet, um, and it was uh, saying how, like, hey, I didn't, I didn't have, uh, um, you know, warning churches about abusers is liberalism on my bingo card. Like, you know, trying to say that, like, like the the the, the reason people oppose some of the stuff that's going on in the SBC right now is because they think that warning the church about abusers, that's liberalism and bad. Like, he's actually not that stupid. Jared Wilson's conniving. That's why he said that. He said he said that because he'll get a lot of attaboys and pats on the back and he'll be in the cool kids club. But he doesn't actually think that Tom Askell thinks that warning churches about abusers in a legitimate way is actually liberalism. That's not, he, he, he's just pretending to be stupid. That's the thing. He's pretending to be stupid. He's actually not stupid. Or might be meaning when they themselves are talking about the history of racial injustice in this country. Instead, we must do each other the courtesy of allowing brothers and sisters to define what they mean and not to swing a club at them, um, sadly often the club of, of critical race theory, to silence or discredit any legitimate critique that we might be hearing. And so again, this is the scam, right? Because because this is the scam that people will often say about me. That it's, and, and the way they speak about me is that I, I just woke up one day and I just started hating on Gospel Coalition. I was like, you know what? Today I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go from being a Gospel Coalition supporter to being a Gospel Coalition hater. Today I'm gonna go from liking Tim Keller to hating Tim Keller. Like, and I, that's just I woke up one day and I started swinging the clamor. Ah, no, no, no. For months and years we've heard you out. And that's the problem. For months and years and, 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 and all of this, we've heard you out again and again and again and again. And you guys are saying stupid stuff like, wow, you know, you know how we know that racism is still a problem? It's because white households have an average income of $60,000 and black households have an average income of $30,000. That's racist. And we and that's stupid. That's actually not racist. That's actually socialist and Marxist and all this kind of stuff. And so we've heard you say this, and we've heard you explain your stupidity, and we've heard you explain your stupidity again and again and again and again and again and again. And we've been long suffering with it, and we've been patient with it, and we've been, you know, we've asked questions. In fact, Rebecca, you know, I'm sure you know this because you're in these circles, but. Very regularly, people will start asking questions to their own pastor or, you know, maybe their favorite, you know, public theologian or whatever, and they get stonewalled and shut down and say, essentially, touch not the Lord's anointed. Who are you to criticize what I say? This is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. I started saying, you know, that Matt Chandler thing, I used to bend, watch, watch my old Matt Chandler content. I used to bend over backwards to be respectful. I was like, you know, Matt Chandler, you know, he's been so impactful to me. He's been so helpful to me. And I just get so much value out of his stuff. 
I'm just not so sure about this white privilege talk. That doesn't really seem to come from the scripture. That seems to come from Robin DeAngelo, you know, for example. And the minute I said something like that, it's like, how dare you, AD? Like, who are you? I, I lost friends in real life for daring to criticize Matt Chandler and Russell Moore and to, and to ask questions about this stuff. People have been disowned from their friends. People have been uh, excommunicated from their churches effectively because nobody does real excommunication anymore. People are too cowardly for that. Um, we, th- this presentation is like all of us just one day started saying, critical race theory, oh, you woke. And we're just like, we're just maniacs just slopping people's heads off. No, no, no. That's not the way it is. We've we've been long suffering when it comes to this, and we're still long suffering when it comes to this. I've I've had it with the leadership. Like I I, I don't I don't I don't. There's no quarter for the leadership in my opinion anymore. I don't pull any punches. If you're a leader and you're leading people astray, I I, I get after it, right? But I've got I'm so long suffering with people that I know in real life. You know, regular people online that are just you know they've been led astray, and I can tell where they're confused. I have patience for days for people like that i have no patience for gospel coalition because they're the ones that have pulled the wool over so many people's eyes they're the wolves in sheep's clothing they're the ones who know what they're saying and they're pretending to be obtuse they're pretending to be of stupid to be of stupid to be stupid but they're really just conniving wolves and to be honest, the way this presentation has, I don't really know much about Rebecca McLaughlin, and I, I'm not going to ever learn much about her because who cares. But the way this presentation has started is extremely conniving, extremely. So that's my first point. We must define. My second point is that we must repent. And when I say we here, I'm speaking as a white evangelical. The very premise of our question is woke church a stepping stone to theological compromise presumes that we are not already theologically compromised. Sean and I both agree that we are. (laughs) I'm not woke at all, but I'm speaking as a white woman. (laughs) And I'm speaking as a beautiful brown Latino Male, I forgive you, white people. I do. I I absolve you all of your racial sins against me and my people. (laughs) But I believe that if we look at the the history of our forebears in the church, we will find a history of profound theological compromise. We must repent of the sins of our white uh, uh, evangelicals of the past. It's like, yeah, you're not woke at all because, yeah, you're repenting of sins you didn't do as if you did do them uh, because you're definitely not woke at all. <laughs> when it comes to questions of race. I don't even know what woke is. <laughs> we will find a history of slavery, a history of segregation, uh. a history of explicit racial prejudice and discrimination built into our legal systems. Oh, the systemic racism. The systemic racism is in every, it's, it, it, it's indiscernible, but it's there. And you can tell it's there because of the, 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 the discrepancies and the, 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 the irregularities. And it's like, dude, like, everybody knows what woke is. We all get it. <laughs> and, and most tragically, we will find a history of white Christians who look and sound like me no, de- not, not you. They don't sound like you. They sound more like me, probably. <laughs> not you, though. <laughs> you sound like a Brit. Deeply complicit in this. <laughs> now, you might say, well, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't there, there when people from my country, the U- United Kingdom, were transporting millions of enslaved people from Africa to America. I wasn't there. They didn't sound like you, though. They sounded like Yankees <laughs> or Southerners. You might say, I, I wasn't there. They look like me. Maybe they look like you, but they didn't sound like you. So that's enough of that. Maybe, maybe she didn't say that. I don't know. During the period of Jim Crow laws and segregation, you might say, I, I wasn't there when thousands of black Americans were being lynched. Oh, yeah. While white folk who may have been in church that morning were bringing their kids to watch black people being strung up on cre- trees and tortured and mutilated. See, this is this is a part of the woke scam, right? They get your emotions going and stuff like this. And you know, I've I've come to terms with this kind of stuff a long time ago. You know, 
uh, as a beautiful brown man. I had to. Uh, I, I did experience some racism uh, w- when I was a younger boy, and I, I knew about this kind of stuff and things like that. But you know, eventually you got to get over it, right? Eventually you do got to get over it because if you allow yourself to be um, perpetually depressed about our, our the racial injustice of the past and, and stuff like that, um, I got to be honest with you. I, I I don't think we're meant to, to to stew in that and live in that forever. Uh, I don't think that we are, and so uh, you continuing to bring it up. I know you're trying to do the right thing. You think you're you think you're doing good. Um, you're not. You're not doing good. You're not doing anyone any good to, to to constantly remind them of how much of a victim they are and stuff like that. And you see, this is why this is why you know honestly we we, we shouldn't have uh, women in leadership in this way because women. Uh, this is natural for a woman to want to coddle and to want to make everything okay. I've said this many times, but you know when my kids get hurt and they've got the choice between coming to me or their mother, they know they're going to get more comfort. They're going to get more, um, you know, my mom, their, their mom's going to make everything okay, right? And of course, if mom's not around, they'll come to me you know, because I also can do that. But it's just much, it's much better coming from a woman. You see, this is the reality. Like, like, like it's not helpful. And, and I tell my wife this uh, 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 regularly, like, it's not helpful to, to always be there to solve our kids' problems. They need to figure out how to solve it themselves sometimes. They need to figure out how to, how to grit their teeth sometimes when they fall and skin their knees and move on, right? They, they do need to figure out how to do that. They need to know how to walk it off or shake it off or whatever it is. Um, that's necessary, right? But to a woman, it doesn't come naturally. And so, you know, I, that's something we work through and all that kind of thing. Um, and so it's not helpful. It's not helpful to be constantly reminding, you know, black people about how they're victims and how they're just so they, they, they're treated awful in the past and they're still being treated awful. They're, it's just not true either. So they're, they're, it's not true anymore. Um, and so for you to do this, it's just uh, it's disrespectful. It's condescending. Um, you're not our mother. So stop trying to act like it. Um, and it's it doesn't do us any favors. I thank God for my father because my father never allowed me to stew in this kind of thing. And my father experienced real racism. I remember I've told this story as well. My father ran for Congress as a Republican in uh, in Connecticut, and he ran against this Democrat. And there was a, a white man at our church that wrote him this horrific, horrifically racist letter. Um, who, who do you think you are? You need to go back to the island. You know, how dare you run against this, this you know, woman? And his name, this woman was named Barbara Canelli, who look a lot like you. She looked a lot like you. Is that is that is that British? I don't know. Um, anyway, so and and I never I never knew about this letter until I was an adult. My father refused to let me be, play this victim. He refused to let me be this person that's just oh, oh the world's out to get me and stuff like that. I thank God I had that father because I could easily be woke. I know I could. I know I could. Um, in any case, by the way, that 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 issue got resolved in the church, right? Yeah, it was a it was a pretty bad thing. But then, you know, a few days later, this man reached out to my dad and he said, you know, I don't know where that came from. I'm so sorry I said that letter. I mean, obviously I've got hatred in my heart and, you know, all that. And it was squashed. It was over. My dad could have could have could have played the victim and he could have rode that to to some kind of, you know, sympathy vote or something. And you know what my dad did? He didn't tell a freaking soul except for my mother. He didn't tell a soul except for my mother. Anyway, I just I w- it, 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 it does burn me up to be perfectly honest. We were we were having a good time here, but I, but I, I just I hate that. I really do hate that this this mentality of, of you, you think you're helping. You're, you're actually just making things worse for us. Just just leave us alone. How about that? I wasn't there. You might say I wasn't there when a six year old black girl named Ruby Bridges walked into an all white elementary school while hundreds of white parents shouted racial slurs at her, issued death threats against her. And while she, God bless her heart, prayed for their forgiveness, because that's what she'd been raised by her Christian parents to do. You might say, I wasn't there. But you know what? Our parents were. Our grandparents were. Our great-grandparents were. If you, like me, are a white evangelical, this is our tribe. And God have mercy on us if we do not repent. Third, We must believe. Now, Sean very helpfully pointed out to us that for for many people today, this idea of wokeness is is not just a conversation about racial justice, but is a conversation in which 
questions of same-sex sexuality and gender identity have been all mixed together. And when it, it, it comes to these conversations, one of the most powerful arguments that our, our progressive friends might make runs something like this. Just like you white Christians used your Bibles to defend segregation in schools in the 60s, so now you're using your Bibles to oppose gay marriage and transgender identities for believers. Until we realize that the, the first part of that claim is correct, we're going to have no moral legs to stand on as we address the second. But the, the, the problem with the white 60s segregationists was not that they this were too amazing. Christian. This is, it was that they were this, this is amazing. So this is, this is something actually that Ligon Duncan said as well in a different way. Um, but it's like, well, you know, if we're going to... If we're going to stand against the LGBT and, you know, the, the trans gender, you know, transvestites and stuff like that. Well, we have to acknowledge this. We have to get we have to get a little woke because otherwise our kids are going to become gay. That's what Ligon said. He was worried that his kids were going to become gay or, or get influenced by the gay movement or something like that. And it's like pragmatically, we got to, you know, be a little woke. It's like because the thing is, they, they must be talking about getting woke because every person on the planet acknowledges the racial injustices of the past every person i'm the least woke person you could find probably you know this side of the mississippi maybe not <laughs> but but uh obviously i acknowledge racial injustice of the past but you see what she's saying is and this is the this is the scam too like they, they want to import all the rest of it too it's like not only acknowledge it but also fix it the way we tell you to so you got to correct these dis racial disparities economic disparities you got to position people in power you got to you know add blackness to your your qualifications for elder and stuff like that it's like that's really what's being said here you got to import everything you can't just understand the past you've actually got to accept our woke solutions as well and this is a huge scam i'm gonna have to end it here because i've got i forgot about a call that i have to do um, but in any case, um, it, it, this is this is a this is a this is a tactic, right? Because I don't think that these kinds of folks are going to stand against the you know, gay movement and the transvestite movement and all this kind of stuff. You know, they're going to be the ones that are like, oh yeah, you know, tranny pronouns, use them and stuff like that. Um, they're going to be the ones, that, and they're already doing that. So this is just a tactic to get conservatives to be like, well, you see, you're scared of gay people, right? So you're scared of gay people taking over. So you got to get a little woke. And it's all that kind of thing. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this. I, I, don't, I don't really know if I will or not because, I don't know, I just don't like it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, but anyway, I uh, hope you had a great week again. And I hope you have a good Lord's Day tomorrow. Uh, also, I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.